Hello, hello, and welcome back to Leaky Gaming, and welcome back to another episode of Workers and Resources Mod Monday. Couple of revolutionary ones, couple of really useful ones. Really good Monday. First, my man Podolsky, 99. Palace of Culture first opened its doors to visitors in 1962 and has been an integral part of the cultural life of Vologda and Vologda region. The main activity of the Palace Culture is aimed at uh, pre uh, present, uh, preserving and developing various forms of amateur artistic creativity, including an organizing activities, amateur creative teams, organizing leisure, and so on and so on, the history of the building. Now, uh, about the game model. This is type in cinema, you can find it in cinema, and it hosts 20 workers, 160 visitors. This is actually quite nice. Uh, definitely something I'm gonna be looking into. And if you like this mod, don't forget to rate it. If you don't like it, write in the comment section if something is not uh, working for you. Right, so this is, uh, this is a really nice mod. Let me see if we can get it to work here. We have a couple of nice buildings there. We're gonna get to them as soon as possible. But uh, first, let's see if we can get some people in here. Right, so this is a uh, palace of culture. Uh, you, it can be found in a cinema section. Unfortunately, it's still called cinema section. They really need to rename this. Because there's a lot of cultural buildings that can be used over here. And uh, everybody coming here. Oh, they don't like it. It's a little bit too far from them. Let's see what the distances are, and three, four, nine. okay, there we go. Uh, we can we can build a new building over here, and let's go for residential, here we go, and you can populate it straight away. Right, maybe I should have gone with a bigger building. There we go. Okay, so uh, it can be found in the culture or cinema section of the of the uh, mods, and uh, you can find it here. We are close to Soviet border, so price is going to be a little bit lower. But uh, even if somewhere else on the map, it would be just around thirty thousand rubles, which is extremely extremely affordable. I really really like it. There you go. So you have first visitors, and we have maximum number of workers. Right. I really like this building, and I'm pretty sure I'm going to be using this in our bigger cities. Right, this is something I knew about from before. This how this is uh, Haus des Lehrers, or translated from German House of the Teachers. Um, House des Lehrers, or German for House of the Teachers, is a building in Berlin located near Alexanderplatz. Uh, built between 1962 and 1964 under the German Democratic Republic, it's the most notable feature. Uh, it's mural wrapping around the entire building and extending uh, between second and fifth uh, above the ground floors. The designed in a style of Mexican mural art by artist uh, Walter Womatska. Uh, it is titled Unsere Leben, or Our Life, uh, and depicts various occupation groups of, uh, of and aspects of life in GDR. Political university, 80 professors, 80 staff. So this is a university. Uh, you can see iconic pictures on it. This is really, really iconic building. I knew about this one. I never visited, I never went to Berlin, so I never been there, I never saw it in person, but I knew about this building from before. And uh, yes, this is in like mural style, style building from Central America, Mexico mostly, and uh, I believe it would be Mexico mostly, but anyway, um, it uh, has a murals of uh, kind of like <laughs> life in GDR, you can see here. Uh, astronomy and science and workers and designers and all this nice stuff. I think it's amazing and again this is one of the buildings as its political university I will be using because we don't have a lot of those. Right, let's move on. Same matter. Um, Karantuki. Uh, Karantuki made it this one as well and uh, this is a university also. Uh, this is University Institute. The Institute University, small university building that serves as technical university, perfect for building a small university complex. Technical university, 80 staff, 60 professors. Now this is not small. I mean, it's not the biggest one we have, but it's not small and it's uh, technically, the size-wise, is small compared to the house, house, des, house des letters, but it's, um, it's definitely useful thing. It's 
would be the smallest university we have in the game. It looks really, really nice. Uh, compact, uh, detailed, everything, everything is really, really good. I'm, I'm actually liking this building a lot. Right, my man Robs074, student residence hall based on a real building in Lublin, Poland, houses 100 students. Uh, right, this is something uh, that I still have an issue with, I still need to find out how it actually works. And uh, in our Let's Plays we have perfect opportunity to do so. Because I had a lot of issues uh, uh, with students and transporting students and how it, this actually works. But anyway, uh, this is one of the modded, one of the rare, and probably, maybe even one of the the only uh, student residence building that I found in the mods section. Uh, this is exactly what I wanted to do to experiment with vanilla ones as well and of course this one here. Right, this is a student accommodation for 100 students and uh, right, I already read what the description is from Rob's 074. It can be found in the residential, uh, residential part of our mod section. I have way too many mods and you can see it here university halls of residence it's not expensive it houses uh, quite few students that's really really good anyway that's one of my favorites right panelaki uh, Pane paneliki paneliki is the name of this one this is a description in russian uh, okay it's Anyway, it's it's a Russian description, but it's a panel set of panel buildings made by Mauser NATO. Um, he's actually quite good at this. He's creating a lot of these mods. There are some discussions in the should they be dirty when they're built or not, but I don't want to get into it. I love his work and he's doing a really really good job. Now in this set, you have extremely extremely small houses. You can plonk them anywhere they can fit anywhere for example if you go for the smallest one here let me show you this you can even build them around the buildings like in tight spaces that you usually don't think you would be able to squeeze in the building you can with these buildings you can anyway it's set of um, eight buildings so we can go one by one and show you here this is 63 people Work, uh, living here 117 and then we have 188 and then we have small buildings 16 6 and 47 and another small one here with 28 and the last one is the biggest one 295 people can live in building like this 295 as you can see it here yes they are uh, run down i like them but they're quite authentic it would be something that you can find now in eastern eastern europe and probably russia as well uh, or former Soviet Union, especially in this kind of condition. Uh, anyway, I love the buildings, they're really, really good. Right, this one is made by Raytheon. This is four mods, uh, cargo stations, uh, if you didn't notice by now. They're actually cargo stations. I can't really select them. Can we destroy them? Let's check this. Uh, there, there's a couple of controversial things about them uh, that I'm not too crazy about. They are really cheap. They are extremely, extremely cheap. It would be cheaper than... It's cheap. They are like literally 15 rubles each, more or less, depending on how far from the border you are. Uh, the price might go up a little bit, but... Uh, anyway, uh, let me read our sentence or two about this. A large cargo station have four different variations. Design 1, 2, 4 and 6 parking spaces. Unlike vanilla stations, they don't create traffic jams in front of the buildings. If you are tired of traffic jams in front of the freight stations, subscribe. Uh, right, he has a couple of other modes that we cover here, large asphalt plant and large batching plants. Anyway, um, sorry for the log absence uh, of such houses, um, I was busy with other mods for the in-game, today I'll try to... Okay, he's gonna try to... Uh, I'm pretty sure that he's gonna try to uh, build houses uh, for these, well, some kind of buildings on these, because they look quite empty. Now, you would have this kind of cargo stations, especially if it's connected to, um, to a warehouse, for example. Uh, this is just a loading bay, it's not really... It wouldn't be really something that uh, requires any buildings being next to it. It obviously would be transported from a warehouse. This is just a loading station. Uh, right, this is something I will be trying out, especially in the places where we have uh, uh, rush hours. And in our Let's Plays, we have quite few of those. So there you go. We have uh, four different loading cargo stations, and you should definitely check them out. Right, I bet a whole bunch of you were asking what the hell is that red big thing there. Uh, right, this mod is made by Pyro. 
uh, and this is futuristic apartments. Uh, I put it in here because if uh, Soviet Union lasted until 2050, I think we would be seeing something like this. And uh, for mega projects, it's definitely a really, really good uh, mod. So let me read a word or two. In the year 2050, and the USSR has survived some tough times, and it looks like the socialist dream is coming true with new massive structures able to support many people in high-tech luxury. This is the first set of, uh, of futuristic assets with a high construction cost and high capacities, and the more to the late game uh, and keep it interesting. Quality of departments, heads up, 200%. Uh, capacity 3,260 people. The building has an internal heating system to keep the inhabitants toasty in winter. Please let me know if you run into any issues. Right, uh, let's first cover the costs because they are enormous. This is not, not cheap. So you have a residential building over here in, if you go all the way to the end where our newest mods would be, here in this area, if we want to build this building, would be uh, 2 million rubles. I think it's around 3 million closer to the center of the map we go, but anyway, it's it's quite expensive. 3,000 people can be uh, placed in there, and they say internal heating system, let's confirm this. Yes, it doesn't have a heating here. Unfortunately, game doesn't allow us to build uh, two buildings in one. It can either be residential or industrial. In this case, I was thinking about it, that you have to supply it with oil or something else so it doesn't have or extra electricity with where extra electricity you can see here that it actually is consuming a little bit more electricity than usual you can see here that's 200 percent quality of the flats and of course the end capacity will be 3260 people that's enormous that's really really good i'm gonna test this out i'm gonna try build the couple of these in our let's plays not straight away but later on in the game and see how this actually works but i think this is kind of i didn't count the apartments but let's try three six nine twelve fifteen each one of these have 15 floors and uh if it's high luxury i wouldn't say that they are that each one of these segments is actually one apartment. Well, actually it could be 15 and then would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Actually it would be um, five and five and two, I would say 12, um, 12 apartments times 45. Yeah, that's a little bit less than 3,000 apartments, so obviously they're a little bit tighter because I wouldn't assume that there's an apartment in the middle of the building, you wouldn't have any windows, and um, I didn't count if there are apartments over here, uh, but um, it seems like it would be supporting a little bit less than 3,000 people, but uh, not much, not much. It's not that it's so unrealistic, but I'm really interested in see how the, to see how this building works. Anyway, uh, check it out. Right. This one is tall one. <laughs> it actually has every right to be this tall because this is the Federation Tower. The Federation Tower is the second tallest building in uh, in Europe uh, after I forgot what's it called. It's in St. Petersburg, is the tallest building in Europe, and this is second tallest in Moscow. It's actually a complex of two towers. But you can read about that on Wikipedia or somewhere. Now let me read about this. This is um, Vilaxus uh, made this mod. The Federation Tower is the second tallest building in Europe. It's located in Moscow. In the game, the building accommodates 2,714 residents. I did a little bit of style, uh, a bit in style of the game, removing bank logos and put star instead. Uh, the building itself is expensive. This building was supposed to be my first mod, but alas, my hands just reached it. Um, I finished the model. Uh, there are a few gems with lines, but uh, in general it's not noticeable. Um, who does not feel sorry, you can sacrifice a lot of money and... Uh, okay. Um, yeah, you have a PayPal account there as well. Anyway, uh, this is the Federation Tower. Yes, I think I'm not too crazy about this. Of course, you can see the mistakes that were made in the building and he admits it straight away. But um, uh, this is the Federation Tower that is currently being constructed in Moscow, Russia. I do not see the Soviet logo anywhere. Not here. Yeah, it's it's all covered in glass. You don't can't really see the entrance to this building. I'm not really sure if the real one is like that. I wouldn't assume so. It looks a little bit bland, but it's megalithic. It's enormous. Oh, here we go. 
here we go, we have a star. Right, and uh, it houses 2,714 people maximum. Compared to the other building, it definitely looks like it can house this amount of people. Now, mod itself, it's, uh, it's quite grandiose, it's quite big. And the price, I noticed that the price is not that steep. And actually, I think I had a problem finding it over here. Just let me quickly check if it's um, within the residential mods. Uh, probably it's not because I think there's an, a little bit of an issue with this one. I was trying to locate it where the Federation Tower is and it wasn't in the residential buildings. Let me find it and get back to you in a second. Right, here we go. It wasn't in the end where usually new mods are located. It's actually here. Uh, he here you can see uh, Bashnaya Federacia. Uh, this is the in the residential area. It uh, costs only 700,000 to build around here, which is <laughs> four or five times less than this building over here. Albeit, this building has internal heating, which is quite cool, and this one doesn't, so you have to heat this bad boy yourself. Anyway, I think this is a excellent addition to the game and especially if the mother is going to continue working on the details of this building and other mods, I would def I definitely support this kind of work. I'm not sure if I'm going to be using it. Uh, I do like realism and this is not residential building per se, so I'm not really sure. And also uh, entrance to the buildings. I don't see any entrances, but like I said, I'm not an expert on this building. I'm going to have to check it in how it looks in real life and compare it but uh, there you go check it out and last but not least it's the map so uh, let me read a sentence or two about this one this was made by sausage and mash <laughs> yes that's his uh, name in game uh, let me read what is this this is my first man congratulations on finding it the map uh, war stalensk is not a real place and it's not really based in any real life areas. It's simply a fictional map and uh, that I created. The contents behind the map is that it's backwater, abandoned area of Soviet People's Republic that has been almost entirely uh, ignored economically until now. Uh, you have a couple of them, I'm gonna stop reading what it is, uh, and I did a little bit of testing, so I'm gonna show you what it is. Um, the map is quite, um, it's rich, it has a lot of resources, not my favorite thing, because it's not so challenging. I tested a couple of resources, you can see here, uh, we have a mine, I built this, uh, just to see what the quality of the source is, because this doesn't look like it's the thickest red color I've ever seen, it has, like, so you can get better resource and also I tried one over here in a little bit less um, a little bit less uh, populated area actually let me see where I put that one I need to find it I think it's in this area here uh, the quality of the uh, quality on the source is quite good I'm not happy about that because that means it's gonna be uh, quite easy playing this map, but the map is really, really good. I wish it had a little bit less resources, so it's a little bit more challenging, but um, uh, map author invested quite few hours, if not days, into creating this, and you have starting buildings already, you have some harbors uh, for people, you have a couple of towns, which are not just randomly generated vanilla towns, they are actually towns with soul, I have to say, and I really, really like it. And you have a couple of washed out bridges, destroyed roads and stuff like that. Definitely, definitely something to pay attention to and definitely something I really, really like. Uh, you have a couple of bridges, I don't know if I can find them. You ha if you go on the banks of the rivers, you will see washed out uh, bridges. You will see um, really really a lot of details around this map so for example this is one of the cities that was built there I didn't build this you have a little bit of apartment building you have two different docks and you have a vehicle depot so it gives you a little bit of a heads up if you want to start exporting something like I don't know oil or some products uh, but like I said the, uh, the map is quite rich and I don't think it would be too challenging for us to uh, to start exporting and earning whole crap lot of money. So, I'm not sure if we're gonna play Let's Plays on this one, just because of the easiness of the map, but uh, details and everything else, it's there's a lot of effort went into this map. So I really, really appreciate it. You can uh, see all the mods we had here today in the comment section, sorry, in the description of the video, so go and check them out. Uh, they're really, really nice. Uh, rate them as you see fit. For me, these are the 
nine best mods I found this Monday, and I really, really like them. Anyway, that's it. Hope you enjoyed this mod Monday. Guys, if you did, press the like button, subscribe, notification bell, do ring it, uh, really helps. And uh, you have Discord channel in the, in the description of this video, and join if you wish, and there's Facebook, Instagram, and all that stuff that I post sometimes. Anyway, guys, thank you for watching. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.